wanted to again thank Andrew and the FIA for having this conference. I, I thought some of the, the themes really resonated very well with, with Peak and supply chain and, and kind of trying to illustrate the scale and the complexity of some of the challenges you have when scaling up fusion and we're gonna use an energy storage example in that case study. But just to give you a little background on Peak, and we had a discussion earlier on public-private partnerships. Uh, Peak, Peak is an example of a company that made it through a public-private partnership and has grown into something bigger than the parts because of that process. So, so let's get over to kind of what we're going to talk about. So through all of this public-private partnership, one of the things like we got involved with was the fusion industry. And last fall, I was invited to an IEEE symposium um, put on by Sandia and NIF where they're talking about, okay, what's the supply chain and what are some of the challenges for scaling up fusion? Um, so we went through this and, and kind of some of the themes that came out, there were switches, there were capacitors, there were some of the, the rare earth metals and the magnetic technologies, all hard challenges that are on the peripheral of the core fusion challenges that the, the trailblazers are leading. And it's important that all of these things kind of converge at the same time for the overall industry to benefit. So, I know most about capacitors. I'm going to highlight again this supply chain concern with capacitors to kind of give you a little bit of depth uh, on things that we need to be vocalizing as an industry. And that's really the hope out of this talk is the FIA, the individual companies will not internalize some of these challenges. Don't run away from them. Don't try and tackle everything yourself. Bring them up in the industry. Work for um, competitive advantage. You know, leverage your connections, and we can solve the problems together and make a difference in what we're trying to do. So in, in, the, in the talk I gave at IEEE, uh, some of the capacitor integrators were there. Again, Peak Nano, we make nano layer polymer film for capacitors, which is the primary component. And we work with capacitor integrators to build the capacitors that go into uh, you know, Z, uh, which is shown here, or, or some of the other kind of magnetic resonance type of fusion generators that are around. But Randy Curry from Zandia kind of said, well, as we look at the next generation of the Z, Z fusion system, you know, it's going to be you know, three to five times the size. And we're going to need a warehouse of capacitors to run these things. And that's when we started pulling on threads of, well, what really does that mean in terms of the current industry? So whether you're working with any of the fusion systems, capacitors are a key component for storing energy, for dumping energy back in the grid. They're integrated all over the system. Um, but at the 50 megajoule scale, what you're really looking for is a, starting to be a significant amount of capacitor material for capacitor integrators or even plastic manufacturers, you know, forcing up to a million pounds a year per full generator. So when you start to look at that and you're making 1,000 to 2,500 capacitors for a single large generator, if you have success, and I hope you do from several of these different approaches, we won't be building one at a time per company. Maybe we're building two or three. Maybe we have three or four solutions. We're looking at tens to twenties of millions of pounds of film and 50,000 capacitors a year. Then these things are huge. They're four foot by three foot by two foot. They're large capacitors. The current capacitor integration organizations can only make a couple thousand capacitors a year. You're looking at lead times of decades to make that many capacitors without advances in integration and automation on the capacitor level. In the film level for capacitors, I'll show you a little bit about the market here. We're also lacking in capacity to satisfy that level of support for the energy storage, regardless of what type of generator wins, and again, I hope multiple do. So as you look at the graph on the right, that is the current view of current production and, and market need of capacitors globally. So right now we're, we're sitting pretty, uh, but the problem, one of the problems are that 80% of the film production for capacitors is made over in Asia, with 10% in, in Europe and a little scattered around the world. There's zero pounds of domestic production of traditional capacitor film, again, ours is nano layered, it's a little special. Uh, available in the U.S. So we have offshored all of this technology. So that's a big problem when we're going to start looking at tens to 20 million pounds a year of film turning on like that in a decade. Um, these lines, these systems, the equipment to build them is kind of about the size of an Amazon warehouse, if you can think of that, the logistics. So the lead times on manufacturing the films is three to five years to get a facility up that can do five million pounds. 
And that's, again, not looking at the workforce and the integration and the operators that have to go on and balancing the raw material costs. So we're falling behind on looking ahead at what we might need for fusion. And one of the, the things that the graph shows over there is the global production of capacitor film. We said, okay, well, supply chain is great. We can leverage other industries. You know, everybody needs energy storage, electric vehicles, grid. We have all these, you know, efforts pushing. And President Biden yesterday, or, uh, yesterday threw out the mandate of, you know, electric vehicles are coming in, in, in power. Well, that's great. They all take capacitor film too. And we haven't planned well for that either. So we're all leveraging the same resource without investing or actually doing the due diligence to make sure it's ready to support. So in terms of capacitor films, we're coming to a, you know, pay the piper kind of scenario in a couple of years. So I just want to make sure that the Fusion Industry Association, that the, the people in the Fusion industry who are going to rely on these external suppliers for either energy storage, for switches, for other kind of technologies, they're doing the due diligence and digging into potential scale-up problems like this, and they're vocalizing it and sharing it with the overall industry. Because if we don't, no one's going to solve the problem. It's, it's all about making it known, making it popular, uncovering the ugly warts that we have to tackle. Don't be afraid of it. Go after it, and we'll have a better chance of success. But I would say one of the things we're trying to do and leverage, and again, another theme to take on, is we are hitting some of the lobbyists and some of the government angles to say, hey, DOE, we need infrastructure to build this capacitor system to support fusion, to support electric vehicles. Congress would, hey, please bring this up in your in your talks, in your in your interviews. You know, U.S. infrastructure, U.S. technology, U.S. manufacturing, it's lacking. We need it. Bring it, bring it forward. So we need force multipliers in this. And you know, we're trying on one end, but there are so many other industries and so many other technologies that also need this type of view. And you know, I, I'd like to charge everybody in the room with trying to undertake some of this to make sure we're all successful and we make the impact that we need. And that the trailblazers that were up here on the panels before, you know, doing all the hard work on the physics and the fusion, don't fall down because someone else didn't carry their work. So with that, I would like to thank everybody for listening to me and enjoy lunch. Yeah.